Hey, hey, friends. This is Martine Williams, and I am obsessed with all things Mompreneur Life and helping you to remix your priorities, your habits, your mindsets, and yes, even your relationships so that you can build a successful business without losing yourself in the process. I'm also obsessed with the killer turquoise and lyrics of the 80s and 90s, but that's beside the point. Girlfriend, you don't have to hustle 24-7, 365, and continue to sacrifice your health, your relationships, and your sanity to be a successful mompreneur. As a small town girl living in a lonely world to a six-figure mompreneur, I am here to teach you how. There is a better way, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for all of the how-tos, the encouragement, the life hacks, the success tips, and of course, a little side of tough love. This is the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast, so let's do this. Well, hey friends, and welcome back to the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. This is episode number 11, and you are going to be so blessed by this episode with my friend, Karis Snyder. So be sure you have your pen and your paper ready to take notes. So Karis is a Christian communicator who shares the hope of God through speaking, writing, coaching, and leading worship. She is the author of Anxiety Elephants, 31 day devotional, which I have, it's all on stopping out your anxiety. And she also has anxiety elephants for tweens coming out March 1st of 2022. I'm so excited about that. Her passion for the Lord comes forth as she shares from her experiences of overcoming depression, anxiety, fear, and shame. Karis desires to help women of all generations to see their value and worth through the eyes of the Lord. It is important to her to give a voice to the voiceless and help those who feel alone. Karis wants everyone to find freedom and go after their purpose and calling on their lives because no one else can accomplish what God created them to do. And let me just say, you will hear her heart and her passion for the mission that she is on. We talk about anxiety. You know, she gives her best tips on dealing with anxiety because only someone who's been through anxiety can truly like give back to you and help you to understand what's happening and how to, to handle it. She talks about getting out of the what if and into the what is absolutely love that. We talk about gratitude is a natural anxiety blocker, and you're just going to really enjoy this episode. So get your pen and paper ready and let's go. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the Mompreneur Life Remixed podcast. I'm so excited about this episode with my dear friend, uh, Karis Snyder. Uh, she and I actually knew each other from a previous company. You've heard me talk about 31 Gifts. And it's always interesting to me how the people that I've met through the, that business, sometimes I've gotten closer with them after the businesses, they've left the business, um, or we just feel like we're more connected. So I do feel like um, that is the situation with Karis and I, and I just adore her and her mission. And I really wanted to have her on today because uh, we are in a very troublesome time right now, um, not just as mompreneurs, but as a nation. And I know anxiety is is high for a lot of people. And so um, Karis is always the one that I go to um, because she's a mom, she's a mompreneur, um, and that's her passion is to talk to people about anxiety. So thank you so much, Karis, for being on our Turquoise Talk episode today. Man, I'm excited to be here and be with your mompreneurs. Yes, yes. So as as our Turquoise Talks, you know, my vision with that is really just giving other mompreneurs kind of an, an inside uh, scoop of you know, how life, how you do life and how you do business as a mompreneur. And then we're definitely going to get into um, some anxiety talk and the tips that you can provide for us. But just tell us a little bit about you and your family and, you know, why you decided to become a mompreneur. Yeah. You know, I know that's a simple question, but I love that question because I think it helps us as moms to know that we're really all a lot alike Mm -hmm. um, with life. I have two kids. I have two daughters, one who Y'all, she's going to be 13 in November. So we're about to enter teenage world. So y'all may need to help me with that. Um, And then I have another daughter who is nine and um, they are both very active. My, Mm -hmm. my oldest, she rides horses, she plays basketball. So we're really, you know, busy with their activities. And then my youngest, she is on a competition 
baton team, a twirler. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So this is brand new for her. So just kind of navigating those new emotions for her to be in a competitive sport. Mm-hmm. She's never done that before. Um, she's my, my child who everybody, she's good with everybody winning, um, you know, and that's good. Me personally, I want to win. So we, <laughs> <laughs> that's like my husband, yeah. I'm more like a team player and he's more like the competitiveness. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we have to, it's a good balancing act for us. Um, and then my husband and I, we have been married for, I just sat here thinking a minute for (laughs) 17 years. Oh my goodness. 17 years. Wow. And, um, so he is, and he's a self-employed himself. He, um, has his own um, mortgage business that he runs. And then he is the worship leader at our church. And I help him with that as well. And then we also, I mean, we have a dog. We have a fur child. Mm-hmm. His name is Cooper Hash Brown. And <laughs> he thinks he's human. I, I know, Martine, you have a dog. So you get yes. it, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And mine thinks he's a fish. I mean, he's, you know, diving yes. in the water. I know you've seen those videos. And for those of you listening, if you're not following me on Instagram and you want to see a dog like dive down nine feet deep in the pool, you need to go follow me on Instagram um, because it's pretty miraculous. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't either. And I'll go back and just watch videos of him over and over. It's, it's incredible. So, um, so that's a little bit about our family, but I really, I wanted to be a mompreneur because I wanted to be with my kids. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be involved in their life. You know, my mom was a stay at home mom. And so she was there, she was involved and I wanted to do that for my kids. But I also felt like God had given me abilities to use to, mm-hmm. to help others, to encourage, you know, to empower other women so that we can, do life together and just to be able to, to even help provide financially, you know, with our family, I wanted to do that. I have that drive within Mm -hmm. me to push. And so that's kind of where that desire came for me uh, to know that I have this time, Mm -hmm. I have these, these desires and this want to, to help others. So let's put all that together. You know, for me, it's through, through speaking, through writing, through coaching. And um, so that's kind of how all of that came about about for me. Yeah. Yeah. The flexibility, you know, that's what I hear when you're, you know, kind of sharing all that, the flexibility, the opportunities to be both. And, and I think that's such an important part of what I want to share with mompreneurs is, you know, it can be both. And you can be an amazing mom, an amazing wife and an entrepreneur, you know, you can have success in your business without losing at home. And that's really kind of my mission with kind of remixing up what mompreneur life looks like. You know, and to give women the permission to be both and to know that you don't have to sacrifice yourself or your family, you know, on the altar of success, you can be, you really can be both. It just takes intentionality and, um, not following the norm, you know, the hustle 24, seven, 365. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's right. I think that's good. And, you know, I think too, we have to remember I'm learning success for me is going to look different mm-hmm. than success for you. Right. And that's, that's not wrong. Right. Um, and it's all going to be different. And there are going to be seasons in my life where I need to focus more on mom and on the activities of my kids. And, and you know, that doesn't mean I'm letting business stuff slide. Right. That just needs my focus right then. Right. And then there are going to be those other seasons where I can go all in on business and mm-hmm. I can, you know, run a little bit harder. Right. Um, you know, maybe push a little bit faster with those things and to know that um, sometimes balance is not 50 50. It may be 60 40 or 70 right. 30. Right. Right. Yeah. And so, so I think you're right. And I think if we can look at it that way and not look at it as we're doing something wrong, we, mm-hmm. we as moms, we put pressure on ourselves. We put mm-hmm. so much pressure. We do. And when we can remove that from ourselves. I think we can take a deeper breath and enjoy it's the process. We've got to enjoy the process. Right. Right. For sure. So I always like to ask this question. What's the one thing you wish you would have known before you started? Like, what was there a mess before the success or, you know, what was one of those things that you're like, man, I wish I'd have known that before I got started. I wish I would have known that it's hard for everybody. Mm, That's good. That, that it's not, it wasn't, it's not just me. Mm -hmm. It's not that I am doing something wrong. It's just that it's hard for everybody. Right. Um, And this, we're all on a, on a, this messy journey and, you know, in that mess, that's where probably your message comes from for your business, right. For your family, for, for your purpose. And so, you know, I wish I would have known 
for as a speaker and a writer, you know, that it takes time and that creativity Mm -hmm. takes time to develop and you've got to get away from all the distractions of your life. Um, You know, and that even when working with others, you're not going to get it right every time because we're human. Right. Right. We've got to give ourselves that grace to know Mm -hmm. just because I messed up doesn't mean that I am messed up. It just means right. I, I made a mistake. I can learn from that and I can grow and I can get better from that. And then how much more can I help others grow by right. learning from that? Cause you're on the that. other side of it, right? right. You, you went through it, you're on the other side of it. And now you're able to help someone or only those of us, you know, who've been through the same struggle can help someone get to the other side of it. You know, once you've kind of figured it out. And one of my favorite things that my coach has said really all year is we win or we learn. And so there's no losing, you know, you win or you learn if you choose to look at it in that way, like you said, I mean, your, your um, mess is really an opportunity, you know, to become your, your message. And it just takes that mindset, you know, and not comparing. I mean, we look at other people, uh, other mompreneurs and we see where they're at and we think, well, they were, you know, overnight success. They weren't, they don't, you know, always share all the backside, you know, back end struggles that they went through. And so I want to kind of bring those to the forefront because I do think it's important for other mompreneurs that they're just getting started, or maybe they're a seasoned mompreneur and they just feel like they're never going to get there or they're a failure, you know? Yeah. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I think you're right. You know, we look at where people are mm-hmm. and we have no idea what they're backstory is what right. their road looks like, you know, and we're, and I, I have found myself, even if I were honest saying, I wish I was where they were, mm-hmm. but I have no idea what they went through to, to get, get to where they are, right. you know? And so I think about that. I think about my life and, and all through my life. I don't know if any of you have ever done this or you are, I just put this pressure of perfection on myself, even as a kid, as a college mm-hmm. student. And I thought I had to be perfect to be successful and no human being can live up to that. Right. And you know, when it finally caught up with me and I was successful within, you know, my 31 business at the time I was leading women, Right. but that pressure that I was putting on myself, you know, developed into some anxiety and then into depression and mm-hmm. everything just kind of came crumbling down because I didn't realize that it was supposed to be messy and it was supposed to be hard mm-hmm. and that was okay. Right. It was okay. And so I had to learn from that, you know, and, and hitting rock bottom was, I see the good in that now. When I look back, it's been 10 years now since then. I mean, just to see where I've been, I I don't know if that sounds weird to say I'm grateful for the bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't think so at all. I don't I think learned so a lot there. Yeah. 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 I mean, when things are going well, you know, um, things are just going well, you know, I mean, there's opportunities to learn when things are going well, but I think really when we kind of get in the trenches and get in those messy moments, we're more aware and we're more seeking, you know, what's the lesson. That's one thing, even to my children, I try to share with them. Like when you're going through hard times or something didn't work out the way you want it to work out, what's the lesson in it? There is a lesson, a lesson in it, if you're looking for it. So I think if we don't have those Valley moments, we're not going to respond to those lessons as well. Yeah. or not see it, you know, because we're yeah. so busy being on that high peak. That's good. And I think it allowed me to be more compassionate and more mm. willing to connect with people, especially yeah. women. Right. Um, you know, I tried to disconnect from women. I mm-hmm. had a horrible, uh, just a wrong view. And then mm-hmm. by going through that, I realized these women, they are not my enemy. They are my warrior sisters. You know, we're right. in this battle, this fight together. And it just allowed me to, to have more empathy for them and to see they're struggling too. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we can get through these struggles and overcome together and just how much more uh, empowered and emboldened can we be, you know, when we mm-hmm. do life together. So I think, you know, as you and I sit here and talk, I don't know that I've ever said that before that I'm thankful for the bottom, but mm-hmm. I am, I'm thankful yeah. that, that I got there because then it helped me to see in a much different. It forced me to shift my perspective. Right. And it forced me to get out of myself and get out of my own way and see mm-hmm. all the other people around me. Right. Right. Yeah. When I think about this last year and I shared this on the previous episode, just, you know, with my knee injury and then with, you know, getting sick with COVID, like those were definitely bottom moments for me this year. And 
I mean, I kept trying to say, I'm trying to be thankful, Lord. I'm trying to be thankful, Lord. Like, what's the lesson here? And there was so much, you know, I learned lots about, you know, feelings and emotions and, and really, like you said, I mean, I've always been an empathetic person, but I've also kind of kept an arm's length distance from anyone that was dramatic or drama or what I thought was being drama when really they were just sharing their feelings and emotions. And because I was kind of disconnected from my own, you know, I wasn't able to be as empathetic with them. So I think, um, like you said, I mean, your, your bottom allowed you to be more compassionate and empathetic of people that maybe don't do life and business like you, you know, or, or for me, I know, um, how I handle emotions now is completely different. And so I am thankful for it. I wasn't in the middle of it. (laughs) I wasn't thankful for it. I was trying to be, but, um, when you can be on the other side and, and that's why I think I shared in the last episode too, that, you know, sometimes I feel led to share while I'm in the, the struggle, but I, always feel led to share when I'm on the other side of it, because I do believe that our, you know, our past struggles become our present purposes to help other people. So thank you so much for being able to say that you're thankful for the the bottom because someone may be listening right now and they're at the rock bottom. Yeah. You know, they're at the rock bottom and they're trying to see that light. And, you know, we're here to tell you that there is light. There There is is light there. Yeah. Yeah, There's hope. Even as you're talking, I hear hope, Mm -hmm. you know, in your voice and hope is, it's more powerful than any darkness and any evil than any mm-hmm. discouragement. And when you can hear another voice and it may sound Southern like mine, but or mine, hear, right, exactly. <laughs> when you hear them say hope and you're like, okay, this mom, she made it. She got to the other side. I can, I can too. And I think that just that word, just saying that word, you know, and just, even though you may not can see it, just knowing that it is there and that others made it, that gives you the, the courage to take the next step. Mm -hmm. And that next step for somebody listening literally may be a crawl, but it is a step forward. It's a step forward. It might just be getting out of the bed. That's right. You know, maybe just taking a shower today or just brush. I mean, doing something for yourself today. I mean, just take those baby steps. Um, I know for, for me, when I'm in those Valley moments, it's, I'm a doer. I know you are too, very driven person. So I just want to like jump out and start going gangbusters. And what I learned through these two obstacles that I went through this year is that just a baby step, like you said, what's that next step? Don't try to boil the ocean, Martine, like what's your next step just to get kind of back into, um, into your routine. So in speaking of routine, what does a typical day look like you look like for you? You know, what routines do you have to kind of set you up for success, either personally or professionally? Yeah, I like that question. And, you know, I'm an, an open book. I told you that before <laughs> we started this uh, podcast, I am working on time management. So if mm-hmm. anyone else is out there working on that, I am with you. I totally get it. <laughs> um, it's a, a constant typical, battle, right? It is. <laughs> oh, I just want to get it right, but we'll get there. Um, so a typical day for me, especially during the school week, I am doing the hustle and bustle. Um, we do not, where I live, y'all, we don't have buses. So we have to take our kids to school. We have to Mm -hmm. drop them off. We have to pick them up. So I'm in the midst of, you know, getting uh, kids ready for school in the morning. I do try to get up early and drink my coffee when no one, no one else is awake, um, you know, and read my Bible and just really get my thoughts ready Mm -hmm. and get myself mentally focused for the day. Um, So I do get up early and do that and then get everybody off to school. And then when I get home, it's because I do work from home. I'm typically, you know, checking email or Mm -hmm. or working on things that I need to do for the day, if it's writing or maybe um, I'm working on speaking topics, if I have things coming up, places to go to speak. Um, And then from there, I try to get a workout in. I always Mm -hmm. feel better, right? When you can work out, when you can exercise. Um, And then I may run errands like you guys do and then get ready for those afternoon activities. I like to have work done by the time we're eating dinner. So I'm not doing it anymore. But if we're being honest, I don't, I don't right. always get it done. So right. sometimes but after bedtime, I'm opening the computer back up to finish those last minute things. So that's a typical day for me. Mm-hmm. Um, what it looks like, things may, may change up from here, you know, from one minute to the next, but it may sound a lot like for some of you, the same thing, you know, you're trying to manage your business a little bit here right. in the morning in between, you know, your car line, uh, morning and afternoon routines. And then even sometimes when I'm in the car line, I'm working on my computer, or I'm, you know, making those phone calls, just trying to make the best of, of that time that I have. Right. 
Well, in the different seasons of life, like I know people have asked me, you know, how do you get it all done? Or, you know, what does your day look like? And when my kids were younger, I literally was working in the nooks and crannies of time. Like when they were napping was when I was trying to do, you know, my work or trying to do something for myself. And so now, you know, they're gone to school all day. So I have more time, but more time doesn't make us more productive. Y'all need to hear that. (laughs) <laughs> because Amen. we can still waste time, you know? So I know I, I was just sharing the other day when I was in college and I had a full load of classes. I was um, volunteering for my major that I was doing in a physical therapy. And then I was also waiting tables and I had like the best grades of any semester because I didn't have time to waste. I had to be very, you know, intentional with my time because everything was like scheduled to the max. So I'm not definitely not saying you should schedule schedule yourself to the max. You want to allow some margin in there, but I just think that's the misconception around time management is if I just had more time, I would get more done. And that's not true. That's not true. That's right. And I mean, I even find myself watching different series on Netflix. I'm like, what? This is not productive. And yet I can't, <laughs> can't look I feel, away. I can't, I can't look away. Like right now I'm watching to call a midwife and I'm like, this, this has nothing to do with what, what I'm supposed to be doing, but I can't, I can't look away. So I agree. I, I do find sometimes when I have more time, I sit and think in those Mm -hmm. moments, what should I be doing? And then an hour has passed and I'm done. I've done nothing. Yeah. I think, you know, for mompreneurs, we need to give ourselves a little grace too for like watching the Netflix shows and things like that. Because as a mompreneur, your mind is always going, always going and thinking of ideas, you know, for your business, whether you have an Etsy shop or you're a speaker or an author or you're in direct sales or whatever. I mean, mompreneur encompasses a lots of different backgrounds. Your mind is always running. And so to be able to just watch mindless TV <laughs> for me is kind of an escape. It kind of gets me to just turn my brain off, you know, because if I just try to lay in bed and just be still and be quiet, that's really difficult for me. You know, it's really difficult. And I'm trying to be better at that because we do need those quiet moments so that we can hear from him, you know, and, and, and be able to hear what what's next. But um, yeah, so give yourself grace on the Netflix. Yes, You're all we, good. Yeah. We need some moments like that. I think that's good. And then we can text one another and say, Hey, did you watch this? And then that allows us to build community. That's right. That's right. So have you ever experienced burnout? And if you did have, how did you recover from it? And if not, how have you been able to prevent it from happening? Yeah. Um, I have experienced burnout. I've experienced it. I think, you know, more than once, honestly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at that, I had spoke earlier about hitting kind of rock bottom with anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And that burnout came because I had put all this pressure on myself to be the Pinterest mom, if you will, with my toddler and to cook all the meals and to be this amazing wife and then to be this amazing uh, business owner. And I put this pressure on myself that I had to work constantly, that there could be no, Mm -hmm. no break, Mm -hmm. that if I took a break, that I was wasting time. Right. Um, right. You know, that I was being lazy, which is not true at all. You know, you need a break, you need a rest. And uh, that burnout caused me literally my, my body and my brain just, they said, no, we can't, we can't Mm -hmm. do anymore. And so um, that it caused me to begin to feel that anxiety and that uh, racing heartbeat. And then I was afraid to tell anyone about that. And then that moved me into this place of shame, which moved me into guilt and depression. Mm-hmm. And I hit the lowest of the lows and um, it knocked me out. It knocked me down. And, uh, you know, there were days where I, I couldn't get out of the bed. I right. couldn't brush my teeth because I just felt so overwhelmed and so full of shame. Um, and in those moments, what, what helped me to look up from that burnout and to get healing and restoration was first to look up mm-hmm. and to know that God said, hey, I'm not mad at you. Right. You're not alone. I love you. And I have a purpose for you and for your life. Um, And when I looked up to him, there were helpers there. I didn't have to do life alone. And for me, those helpers, they were my doctor. They were a counselor, my family, my friends, my, my church group. So just realizing that I didn't have to bear that burden alone and to realize that God gave me so much grace. Mm -hmm. He, he gave, he knew that we were not going to get it perfect, which is why he sent his son. So he knew we weren't going to get it right. So why was I expecting myself to do something to live in perfection when God didn't put that expectation on me? 
So that was one thing I had to learn to help me in burnout was to stop expecting perfection, right? Um, you know, and just see that I was willing to try, just be willing mm-hmm. to try and see what happens. So that helped um, realizing that no is not a bad word. <laughs> Is Amen, not, sister. Right? Amen. No is not a bad word. Please say no. Someone say no today, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I had to learn that, that I was not supposed to do all the things. There were other women that needed to do the things. And when I would say yes to everything, that could have been taking their opportunities away. So right. I didn't right. have to say yes to everything. I could just say yes to what God had called me to. And sometimes you're going to find yourself in some seasons needing to say no more. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to be in other seasons where you may say no less. But no is not a bad word. Um, and I, I also learned the value is simple, but sleep and rest, they're so mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. And I needed to go to bed. I needed to give my mind that rest, that break to sleep, um, you know, and to get a good amount of, you know, six to seven hours. That was what is really good, you know, for right. your brain to just really rest. I know that there are days and some of you, you have little ones that don't mm-hmm. sleep through the night, you know, so I, I know that you may be in that season. So finding those times to rest when you can is important. And I think too, with burnout, I've learned this recently over the last few years is the power of community mm-hmm. that, yeah. you know, we're, we're supposed to do life together. Right. Um, you know, and, and when we share burdens with one another, it does not make you a burden. It mm-hmm. just makes you real mm-hmm. and it makes you honest. Like and that. by, by you being real and honest with your, your community, the other mompreneurs around you, your tribe, it gives them the courage to be honest too. It gives them the courage to be real. And it gives them the courage to take off the mask, if you will, and say, here I am. This is what life really is for me. And then when we can acknowledge our reality, then we can move forward because right. we're not pretending anymore. We're like, this is, our, this is where we're at. Mm-hmm. So now what's the real plan for us yeah. to move forward? How can we go forward? So by having that community, having that rest, having the helpers, those things have really helped me, you know, mm-hmm. with, with burnout. And I can find myself sometimes pulling back into old tendencies. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to stop and I say, okay, remember what, where this got you. Right. And remember the things that you've learned, you know, so I even still have to remind myself of those, those things, but, but I know those three things really were so helpful for me. Well, you know, we're always a work in progress and excuse me. And, and I too have had multiple, you know, opportunities for burnout in, in my life. And, um, I love what you said about, you know, when you share your burdens with others, it doesn't make you a burden. And I think, that is so key for so many women who are listening, mompreneurs or women just in general listening right now. And I know I have some dudes that listen too. So I, it's so important to have that community and to have that safe, even if it's one person to be able to share, but for you to know, because as someone like you and I are, who are very empathetic and we're usually the ones encouraging others and we're kind of the strong one, that type of role that we've, we've put on ourselves. really, no one really puts that on me. I put it on myself more than anything else. But to really have the understanding that just because I'm sharing my burden with you doesn't make me a burden. That's right. That is huge. I really hope someone will listen to that because as you and I have said before, failure doesn't make you a failure either. It's just something that happened. You figure out a way it didn't work and that doesn't make you personally a failure. And so I really hope that that um, encourages someone today that we need to be, we need to have someone to share our burdens with. And I see this a lot. My husband, and I talk about this all the time. Um, you know, the, the people like the men that he talks to and, um, he, you know, suffer, suffers with anxiety as well. And so many men, and I would say even women more so men than women just don't have those relationships. They don't have that person that can be their safe, safe space, uh, to share that with. And so they are trying to go through life alone. They are getting, in that dark space of shame and not wanting to take that mask off and, and share. And I don't know if that just kind of came up as we were talking, I don't know if there's anything you want to share about how to get in that type of community or how to, you know, establish those kinds of friendships, I guess, and nurture those friendships because they are so important. You cannot do life alone. We weren't intended to, but so many try, you know? Yeah, that's so good. It's powerful. I think, you know, we've been convinced of this lie that 
everyone around us is doing okay. Cause mm-hmm. that's the way it appears mm-hmm. um, because it's, it is scary to be real. It's scary to be vulnerable. vulnerable. It's scary to, to do those things. But when we do, I, I can remember a conversation that I had with a friend of mine a few years ago and she asked me how I was doing. Mm-hmm. And typically, you know, my response is probably like many of you. Oh, I'm good. I'm oh, fine. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. And that day I did not say that to her. I told her, I said, I'm not good. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. Um, you know, I'm really dealing with some anxiety. And I remember saying that to her and I still have the visual of her in my head. She like dropped her soul, uh, her shoulders, like a sigh of relief. Mm-hmm. And she said, you too. Mm. Wow. I was like, yeah. Me? I, got yes. chills. I, yeah. Yeah, me, I was like, me too. And then I looked at her and she had tears in her eyes and she said, I, I thought you had everything together. I thought mm-hmm. everything was perfect in your life. And I was like, it is farthest from that. We began to talk yeah. about our struggles together and, um, we left smiling and just filled with encouragement that day from mm-hmm. talking, from sharing our struggles. So I think, you know, to find those real friendships is, I know I've said the word courage a lot, but I think it takes courage to do it. it. Mm-hmm. Finding that person that you can text and not saying the words, I'm sorry to bother you, but, mm-hmm. but just to say, Hey, I'm really having a hard time. Um, this is going on in my life or uh, this is a, a difficulty. Can you pray for me? Or, or have you right. ever felt anything like this? Right. And when we do that with one another, it gives us permission to say, I can share my struggle with her too. That's a safe person. That's a safe place. And so that was a really powerful moment for me when I was, when she said you too, mm. and I said, okay, this is how we're supposed to have conversations. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Talking about the difficulties, talking about what we're really facing on our journey. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to have the answers, right? I don't oh, have yeah, to have that. the answers for her. She didn't right. have to have the answers for me, but just to know that, we were both going through difficult times, but we were still showing up. Right. We were yeah. still, you know, moving forward. That me too moment, that really was a powerful statement. When, when that, when she spoke that, I was like, okay, here, this is what we do. Yeah. This is real. This is real life. And this is what God intended for us to do. What's well, an immediate release of pressure because you are thinking I must be crazy, you know, cause I seem to be the only one you know, that struggling because we are the best at wearing masks, um, as women and not the ones that just go over our mouth. (laughs) I mean, like a (laughs) full blown mask, we are really good good. at at doing that. And, you know, um, thank you for that's, that's a powerful story. Well, you know, and we, we, uh, we compare our behind the scenes to everybody else's highlight reel. Oh yeah. Social media is like, that's the place that most of it happens, you know, yeah. and even today I posted about, you know, can we bring just the fun back to social media and not, Please. you know, so much of the comparison and, and the opinions and all of that. I mean, that's all, it's never going to go away, but hopefully on our, I know on our pages, it's going to be, you know, positivity know. and fun, but remember oh, when it just yeah. to be just like pets and kids is what we I know and what you media. were eating for dinner. Yes, yeah, that's right. Can <laughs> we please bring back the recipes? Cause this mama is uh bored with her <laughs> recipes right now. So. <laughs> Someone said, yeah, those were the good old days. I'm like, yeah, they sure were. So specifically to anxiety, because I know that's kind of like your main focus when you're coaching or writing or speaking. Um, Are there any specific tips for anxiety in general? So I don't know if there's, if we want to talk about when someone's in a full-blown anxiety attack, like what you have done to help with that or how you manage, because anxiety is not going away. You're learning to live a new normal with anxiety. Right. And I know there's some that are listening and maybe they're, this is their first time experiencing anxiety with all of the stuff we have going on. So what are some helpful tips you can share specific to that? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and everybody experiences anxiety, like you said, at a different level, it could mm-hmm. just be, maybe you're dealing with some anxious moments throughout your day, or you're feeling, you know, in an anxiety attack. And the interesting thing about anxiety is it is housed in our part of our brain called the amygdala Mm -hmm. and where your amygdala is, where that anxiety response is, that's also where your uh, fight or flight response is. So when anxiety kicks in, 
a lot of times it is this thought of a danger that's going to happen. A thought of, you know, worst case scenario. And all of a sudden your fight or flight kicks in when you don't need it. You don't need to fight anybody. You don't need to, um, to run. Right. You're not having a lion chase after you. That's right. But you have all that adrenaline and all those hormones flowing. So in those moments, there's several things that I've learned to do. Okay. Um, one thing that I've learned to do when I feel that anxiety coming just mm-hmm. to, in, in small bits, if you can learn to just pause and take deep breaths to okay. really focus in on your breathing and just do that throughout the day, because you're giving your body what happens when you take that deep breath in, when you inhale and exhale, it's kind of like a massage, if you will, for your amygdala. Okay. And it turns that fight or flight response off. It turns your emotional response off and it allows that thinking part of your brain where you can think rationally, it allows it to come on and then you can get back to thinking rationally. So taking those deep breaths is very helpful. Even if you find yourself in a anxiety attack, if you can just breathe in and breathe out and it may take you several minutes, it can get you back in a calm place. Um, Another thing that I have learned this over the last couple of years, you've got to shift your thoughts, your, your, Get, you got to get out of the what if zone. Mm-hmm. What if this happens? What if um, that happens? What if something over here happens three years from now? And then what do I do? You know, we find ourselves in those future moments mm-hmm. and you've got to get yourself into what is, is, what is my reality right now? So That's for good. example, what is for you right now is that what is the truth is that you are a mompreneur and you're, you're shown up and you've gotten up and you've done something today. You did something today. It may not be as big as yesterday, but you did something. Um, mm-hmm. What is true is that you are alive and you, you are safe, you know? So when we can kind of get into those, what is thoughts, it puts us back into our reality. Because oftentimes with anxiety, we get off into the future. We're thinking, you know, about, our kids 10 years from now when they've graduated high school and they're going to college and how am I going to pay for college? And I need to work harder now, you know, so we get Mm -hmm. into these spirals, you know, and I know right now our world, if you look at our world, it just makes you want to hide, you know, hide under the covers. So that is another thing you can do. Sometimes you just got to turn it all off. Mm -hmm. You got to turn off the media. You got to turn off the news. You got to turn off the negative things that you're feeding your brain. Mm-hmm. And you got to feed it some life giving food. Um, you know, you got, you know, if we think about gardens or we think about those who are farmers, they, they have to feed their crops. They got to make sure they're giving them what they need to, to nurture them, to help them grow. And our brains are the same way. Mm-hmm. So if we're feeding it negative, if we're feeding it scary things, that's what we're going to think on. So mm-hmm. we're going to dwell on and they're going to live anxious mm-hmm. and afraid. So um, sometimes I have to take social media fast. Right. right. And now when I say a fast, I mean, you know, I'm not, I take like a week off or, um, I don't watch the news because it's the same mm-hmm. every day. It is doom and, gloom. I, doom and gloom. And I don't feed myself with that. I, you know, I, for me, I look for those positive affirmations, look in, uh, what does God's word say about who I am? And I even have to Google that. Okay. What is some scripture about who, who God says I am? What are some scriptures on my thoughts that I can read? Um, And then put those around where I can see them. If it's on my bathroom mirror, if it's Mm -hmm. on my cell phone, on my lock screen, if you will, Uh, my lock screen on my phone right now is Psalms 94, 19. Mm -hmm. And every time I look at it, that verse says, when anxiety is great within your comfort brings me joy. So every time I see my phone, that's the first thing that I see. And I'm like, okay, lean in, Mm -hmm. lean into God, lean into his comfort, you know, and know that he is. He is with me. Those things help. Um, an attitude of gratitude. I know for some people that's like, that is so corny, but if you will <laughs> practice this, <laughs> you can't be you, complaining and be grateful no, at the same time. <laughs> you can't. You're, and they have done scientific studies on this. And they're like, literally, your brain cannot be in a gracious place in an anxious place at the same time. Gratitude is like this natural anxiety blocker. So when you're constantly looking for things to be thankful for, you can't look for things to be anxious about. 
because your brain is so focused on, oh, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for Mm -hmm. these cute shoes that I have to wear. I'm thankful for my car. I'm thankful for the birds that I hear singing outside. For me, every morning, I'm thankful for my quiet coffee. (laughs) I am thankful for that. Quiet and hot coffee. Do you drink hot coffee or cold brew? Hot coffee all day. (laughs) Hot coffee. (laughs) I wish I could do the cold brew, y'all, but I have not figured that one out yet. No, I can't either. And see, my husband doesn't like hot coffee. I'm like, oh, can't I, know, cold. I can't. I can't. So, and, you know, when you're thinking about those things, even talking about what I was thankful for with you, my body felt calmer. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt kind of joy, like go through me, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it it shifts your perspective. And when you can do that, it it helps you to see differently. Right. It helps you to see with a lens of hope really. Um, and that takes us back to that, but that's how powerful it is. And so by learning to do those things, that is very helpful. If you do get in an anxiety attack, um, one thing that I found my husband and I recently, we did, uh, we traveled to a conference that I had to promote Mm -hmm. my, my book and, uh, traffic was terrible. Road construction was happening everywhere. Right. And, um, 18 wheelers were just racing by us. And I can't stand that. Yeah. I couldn't. And I felt an anxiety attack come on. And I've learned this technique. It's called grounding. Mm-hmm. And you use your five senses. So uh, you look for five things you can see. Uh, no, excuse me. Look for, yeah, five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. Okay. And by the time you get down to five, four, three, two, one, that's kind of pulled you out of that anxiety attack. And it's put you back into um, your reality, where you are in that moment. Again, it takes you out of those worst case scenarios. So Mm -hmm. that grounding has really been helpful for me. And I would just want to encourage, this is a side note, if you've really been struggling, I mean, with severe anxiety, it has kept you from being able to function Mm -hmm. in your daily life for the last five to six months. I want to encourage you to call a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. call a counselor because more than likely there's something going on in your body. That was my case. Right. And that anxiety began to affect my daily function mm-hmm. of living mm-hmm. and my hormones were just out of balance. My, my body was depleted of the nutrients that it needed. So I needed that additional help of a doctor, just right. like I would have needed a doctor if my heart would have mm-hmm. been out of rhythm or if right. I would have had a broken arm or dealing with um, diabetes So I want to encourage you, it is not wrong to call a doctor or a counselor. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, And there are many of us who need that help. And it's okay. It's okay for you to do that. And if if someone wants to reach out to me and talk about what that process was like for me, I'm happy to Mm -hmm. talk to you, you know, about what that was like. But if, if it has been affecting your just daily living, reaching out to a medical professional, it really it saved my life. Mm -hmm. It really saved my life talking to a doctor and talking to a counselor who knew this is what's going on in your body, but we can fix it. Mm -hmm. That's what the doctor helped me do. And then the counselor said, not only can we fix it, we can get down to the root of where this came from and learn how to cope and how to live differently. So I just feel like somebody needs to know that. Yeah, for sure. Cause that the negative self-talk comes in the shame and, you know, there's all that stigma around, you know, mental health and, you know, we have doctors for a reason, you know, and, and I would also like just to add, like, it may not be the first one you go to may not be the right Right. one. So, you know, if you have a, not the experience or you kind of have a gut instinct that this is not the right fit, that doesn't mean that going to a doctor was not the right decision just means maybe find another one, you know, and ask around and, and kind of get some referrals for those that you can you can connect with, but no, I absolutely right. believe that. Cool. So I was, I was thinking as you were talking about um, something to taste, I don't know if you've seen the video of, of the guy who actually like takes a lemon, like if he's in the middle, he said, it'll actually help you if you're in the little, literally in the middle of an anxiety attack, if you have a lemon, <laughs> cut it open and really, and put the juice in your mouth. Cause it almost like jolts your system. Kind of like you were saying, you know, earlier, it kind of brings you back that mm-hmm. sour of the lemon juice brand. I am not a medical profession. I do not know if that works, but this guy was talking about it. And I said something to Shaw. I said, have you ever tried that? And he said, no. And I said, well, I'm gonna keep a bag of lemons <laughs> just in case when you're having, cause it's, it's really helpless. It's a helpless yeah. feeling when yes. you're the person watching someone go through that yeah. because you know, the reality, but they can't see it. Yeah. And when you see the physical 
you know, struggles that they're going through in their body, in their mind, you're like, you just, you do just want to kind of like bring them back to reality. So, I mean, supposedly lemon juice does that. I don't know. Okay. Have you heard that? Some lemons. I have not. (laughs) Well, let me know. I was about to say, I can see that though, because it does jolt you out of that where you're at. Cause you're so um, stuck in that moment and you're, you know, your, your heart is racing or you can't mm-hmm. breathe or you're sweaty, uh, you know, or you feel nauseous. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and it may appear like to everybody else, you're fine, but you feel like you're dying. You feel like you're dying. Mm-hmm. You really, and then that adds on to the fear. Right. Um, so, okay. I'm getting lemons. I need to try this. <laughs> Well, let me know if it works. We will come back with a part two and it'll be called <laughs> lemons. <laughs> lemons saved my life. That's right. It's so good. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. So shifting a little bit back to being a mompreneur and kind of the business side, how do you stay motivated? Because I know I've, we all know, if you don't know, if you're an entrepreneur or a mompreneur, you don't own a business, you're in a roller coaster and there are ups and downs. And there's times where you're just not motivated mm-hmm. to do the business. Um, or even as a mom, you wake up and you're like, I just can't like the shirt says I can't adult today. Mm-hmm. So is there anything that you, you feel like you do that helps you to kind of stay motivated or where do you find your biggest motivation? I love that question. I remember when I saw that on our, our list to talk about, yeah. I was like, that's really, really good. You know, I do find those moments where it is difficult to mm-hmm. stay motivated. And I think back, one thing that motivates me is where would I be if I didn't have those people in my life who helped me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If they didn't stay motivated, you know? Right. And so knowing that we're here still on this earth, breathing and living because God has us here to help others, mm-hmm. um, that motivates me knowing how grateful I am. But just getting back to, to, Knowing that others said yes and they stay motivated, that helps me to know that others, you know, God has me here to help others. It motivates me to talk about anxiety because people need to know they're not alone. Right. And that this is a real struggle. So being real and knowing that it's encouraging, that helps me to just Mm -hmm. stay motivated. And I think too, because I have two daughters, Mm -hmm. I want them to see that they can be all God has called them to be as women and that their weaknesses does not hold them back. Mm -hmm. Um, It's actually where God shines the brightest through those in the weaknesses. And I want them to just see that. I want them to see there is so much that they can do, Mm -hmm. you know, and to just be that example for them. I think that motivates me just sitting here thinking about it. I want to be an example to them. You know, this younger generation, I know you have kids. Mm -hmm. They're watching. Yeah, they are. They're watching and they need to see us push through the hard. Mm -hmm. And they need to see us, you know, how do we get through those moments and to know if my mom can get through it, I can too. Right. Um, You know, in this generation, man, they are alive for such a time as this. Right. And what is ahead for them, you know? Um, so by us being motivated, by us pushing forward, we're equipping them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're equipping them for the future ahead. And so I think if I really got down to it, to the nuts and bolts of it, it's my, it's for them. A legacy. Yeah. yeah. That's the word I keep hear, hearing is, yep. is legacy. You know, that's powerful. Yep. Very yep. powerful, Karis. And we're, we're face to face. So we're videoing this and I can see the emotion in your face. Uh, when you talk about your children. And I think yeah. as mompreneurs, you know, a lot of us, that's why we do what we do is, is for our family, you know, and to be able to provide the things for our family, to be able to have that flexibility, to be with our kids. And then to kind of, like you say, role model, mm-hmm. you know, going through the struggles in life, like, and like being able to say, Hey, I messed up here, you know, and, but this is how I'm handling it. You know, they don't have any, they don't learn that in the books. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't learn that just from doing their studies at school. I mean, that's life experience and we are the role model that they get to see the most. Um, So I I love that. I love that answer. Very, very good. So if you had a chance to talk to all the mompreneurs of the world for just a few minutes, like what would you really want to make sure that they understood? Hmm. First of all, I would want them to know they're doing better than they think they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are doing so much better than they think they are. I would encourage them 
to look back and see how far they've come Mm -hmm. to see the victories. I would remind them that this journey is supposed to be filled with bumps in the road, potholes in the road, and the smooth places. Mm -hmm. And in those bumps and those potholes, grace, grace Mm -hmm. is supposed to be there and let it in, let it rush over you, let it wash over you and just breathe it in. And I would also encourage all of the mompreneurs out there, don't do this journey alone. Mm. Let other mompreneurs in, encourage one another, empower one another, take up your swords next to each other and fight for one another, fight with each other and know that your mission and my mission is not pitted against one another, but they work together. Mm-hmm. And you're going to reach women that I may not reach and vice versa. Right. And so when we come together, just think about that, envision that, how much more powerful would we be mm-hmm. when we all put those callings and those gifts together? So I think those would be the things that I would encourage them in and mm-hmm. to remember that the mess is supposed to be there. The hard is supposed to be there. And it, that process is building you up. It's making you stronger to keep pushing further and further into new things, into new seasons that God has for you. And your courage muscle is getting built up through mm-hmm. all of that to keep mm-hmm. going. I love that. I have taken like a full page of notes um, from our conversation today. So this has been awesome. So I always like to ask, like, what's the most exciting thing about the season that you're in right now? Yeah. So, you know, I did speak a little bit about having a a devotional out. It's called Anxiety Elephants. It's been out almost, well, it's been out over a year and a half now. And uh, God has used that just in the timing when COVID hit, the book was out and he he used it in um, incredible ways. And through that, he opened the door to allow me to write um, a new devotional. It's for tweens, for eight to 12 year old boys and girls. So um, cool. Yeah. And it's called, it's Anxiety Elephants for Tweens. Um, and it's a 90 day devotional. And so he just reminded me, you know, what if you focus on also equipping mm-hmm. the younger generation to deal with the anxiety because they're dealing with it, mm-hmm. they're struggling with it. And if they're equipped now with how to cope with that anxiety, right. where are they going to be when they're adults? So I'm so excited about this devotional. I'm excited that there is going to be anxiety elephants for tween boys Mm -hmm. and there's an anxiety elephants for tween girls so that we don't forget our boys. I mean, they, they get forgotten sometimes. I know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There's always um, like pretty little devotionals for girls. I'm like, don't forget the boys over here, please. (laughs) Oh, I know. So when the publisher said that they were going to do that, I was like, oh, Yes, that is so awesome. So um, we're in the final stages of working out um, the layout, what it's going to look like. Um, And so that is March 1st. That'll be when it goes live. But people can actually pre-order right now. um, And if they want to pre-order, they can reach out to me to do that. Um, And I can even get is there a something link. I can put in the show notes for them? Yeah, the I can give you somewhere? a link. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. uh, end game press, but I'll get you the link. Okay. They can go ahead and, and pre order. Um, and if somebody's listening and they have a store and they want to do a, a, a pre order for their store, oh, um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they can message me privately and I can get that okay. information yeah. to them as well. Um, so I'm so excited about that. I'm excited about um in-person speaking opportunities coming back, you know, people are getting back together. I'm so grateful for those opportunities to get back with uh, women's groups, church groups, conferences, getting in schools again. I'm really thankful Mm -hmm. for that. Those things are happening. And then just, you know, getting my coaching business started up. So a lot of good, fun things are happening just within life. I think as a speaker, I took for granted those in-person events. And then we lost that year, I guess, maybe, or over a year. Over a year, yes. Yeah. So to be back in front of people face to face, you know, I'm, I'm so glad, so glad those things are coming back. People will tell me, would you come to this event? And I'm like, yes, I would love to. And I'm like, there may only be 25 people here. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. There's one other person. I need human connection. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and that's where you shine, right? Is, is that human connection? Like I say, I wish you could see your face as you're talking through some of these and answering some of these questions because there's so much emotion in your face when you're talking about these things and it just cannot be construed in writing, you know, or in a text or whatever. So just to be able to be face to face, people can see how much you truly care and how much you truly are passionate about it. So I will put um, all of Karis's information in the show notes for y'all 
her, you know, where she's at on social, her website, her book, and then her, you know, her devotionals and stuff that are coming down the pipeline. So I'm so excited for you. It's been cool to watch your journey, you know, watch your journey and watch you just be open. I feel like you've just been really open to what's next. And when it comes to you and it's clear, you go, and sometimes it's not hundred percent clear, but um, you know, you're, you're staying at it. And this entrepreneur, entrepreneur life as our mompreneur life is just, it is hard, you know, and there's ups and downs and you have shined bright for so many people. So I appreciate you being willing to come on and uh, share about anxiety and just be real and raw about what mompreneur life is, is really like, because there may be someone listening that's thinking about becoming a mompreneur. Um, and maybe they, you know, these questions will encourage them and let them know the, the truth also of, of the hardships, because we need to know those as well and kind of know what we're getting into. But it's, it's a beautiful life. I mean, I really do feel so blessed to be a mompreneur and to be able to do what I love, um, but also not sacrifice, you know, home life as well. Mm. So I'd love to just kind of ask you as we close out, just some quick, like some of your favorite things um, uh, to choose you or some favorite things, you know, that, that you use. So do you have a favorite book? So I recently just finished a book. It's called You're the Girl for the Job. It's Jess Conley. It's a great book. If you deal with imposter syndrome, thinking that you're not supposed to be doing mm-hmm. something or that you're doing something and you're like, what in the world? And why am I doing this? Um, you need to read that book. It's really, really good. Okay. Uh, so that's when I just recently finished. And another one is called Standing Strong. Allie Worthington is the author of that okay, book. Yeah. It's another great, great book. Awesome. Um, how about a favorite quote? Do you have one that's like your go-to that you always go back to or a favorite, you know, verse of scripture or something you're like, this is like my life verse or. Um, well, I don't know who said this quote, but I find myself saying it often. I do it afraid. I'm mm-hmm. always telling people do it afraid. Um, and then one scripture, I, I think I have claimed to this one, which I think many people do since I was a child is Philippians 4, 13. Mm-hmm. You know, I can do all things through Christ yeah. who strengthens me, not through myself, right. but through, through Christ that one. And I know I shared Psalms 94, 19 earlier, you know, that it, it's about anxiety. When I read that scripture, when I saw that it said, when anxiety is great, mm-hmm. not if, if or not, it might be, but right. to see that it gave me permission to know, okay, I believe it was King David that wrote that verse just mm-hmm. to see, okay, this happened thousands of years ago, you know, so to know even they understood, um, those two verses have been really, really helpful for me. Awesome. All right. And you know, I have to ask for, ask, because you know, my mission about choosing you, like, what is something that you do just for Karis? Like what's your favorite thing to do just for you? Yeah, honestly taking naps. I love to take (laughs) naps. I know that's so simple, but I do. I love naps. And I love to just take a day and go shopping um, or go sit, you know, in a coffee shop and drink coffee Mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. not get cold. You know what I mean? I go back (laughs) to reheat it in the microwave. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Someone makes it for me and they, you know, I get to sit and drink it. I'm just having a day like that really is refreshing. Mm -hmm. Um, and just doing those type of things really helps me to feel renewed. Awesome. Yeah. Well, this was so fun. Thank you so much for coming on the show and hanging out. And like I said, just, just being you and just being raw and real. And I hope that, um, the list, I know the listeners will be just so, um, empowered and encouraged by this, uh, this conversation around anxiety and just mompreneur life. So thank you so much for coming on the show. And, um, I will put all the information on how they can catch up with you on social. Believe me, if you feel like you need to DM her or ask her a question, she is real. She'll answer your question and won't be just some bot uh, replying (laughs) back to you. It'll be Karis. So thank you so much, Karis, for being on. Yeah. Well, thank you for letting me be on and thank you for just making it a safe place to be real and to have a real conversation with you and just having these conversations for those mompreneurs out there. Yeah. Awesome. All right, friends. Well, y'all know I'm always believing in you and I will catch you on the next episode. Well, that's a wrap friends for this week's episode of the mompreneur life remixed podcast. Thank you so much for listening and for following the show. It means so much to me and listen, friend sharing is caring. So if you loved this episode and thought of some fellow mompreneurs who could benefit, send them the link, 
share this episode or take a screenshot and head on over to Instagram and share and tag me at martine31williams. We are connected on Instagram, right? It's where you will get all the fun behind the scenes of my life and business as a mompreneur. Until next time, know that I am believing in you always. Thank you.